and welcome to episode 12 of the Maxi CNC Rotor build. Um, this is probably going to be the last of the mechanical parts of this build because what I'll be doing is uh, incidentally that big shiny box thing uh, that's going to be the electrical cabinet I require quite a large electrical cabinet for this build because um, there's four different power supplies going into it and uh, you know it's going to be pretty full uh, so today I'll be putting all the uh, bracketry and rails up to run this beautiful industrial crate um, cable chain which is definitely required for CNC machines. On account of this being midwinter and it's howling, well it will be howling with rain again, this is just a break in the weather, I've taken the opportunity to and I'll give a bit of a chat. Um, I'll probably, it'll just be video only and um, if I can hop in and uh, say a few words about what I'm doing through the video, I will. Um, other than that, I should put a bit of nice bit of music on in the background because I can't even hear myself think, let alone speak, uh, because it's you know tin roof, and uh, we're expecting a lot of rain. It's you know floods and what have you. So. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. It's just a bracketry and you know, sort of uh, my way of putting, mounting all these things up. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. So uh, here we go.
item I am going to fit is this beautiful aluminium uh, trade box. Actually, it's uh, really built for an Australian utility vehicle. It's set behind the back wheel normally on a, on a tray back vehicle uh, to put tools in, and it's got this beautiful seal on it. Um, they're not particularly cheap, but you know, it serves uh, my purpose here as you know, semi sealed box. Although I'm going to have a fan inside, um, the fan is actually going to be blowing air out, and I'm go going to be putting. Um, some sort of inlet into the bottom so it takes air underneath uh, so you know it doesn't sort of um, circle blow um, wood dust inside the electrical control box uh, and that's what this is by the way is this is all the uh, electronics and power supplies going to be in here so it's a, it's a fairly deep it's it's about eight inches deep but 200 millimeters deep and you can see how big it is yourself and on, on here I'm going to have uh, you know some switches and dead man switch uh, easy to get at on the front um, so what I'm doing is because there's a six seven millimeter just over a quarter of an inch um, step here I've got a filler piece of plywood here so I'm going to be I, I've got a block of wood in here and a piece of wood here so I don't scratch the paint. I've clamped it in place and it's on wood blocks and a bucket just to hold it in place. So now I'm going to drill and screw in uh, maybe three bolts up the side here and three along the top here and I'm going to put some brackets uh, around the back side here which is more than enough to hold it securely. Uh, but I have to put it into place and um, it's far easier to put it into place now before I start building stuff in it uh, than I, you know, if I did it afterwards. So that's what we'll do. And I will probably take it off here, build the parts inside it and even probably wire it up um, and then fit the whole thing back underneath. I'm toying with, a few, toying with a few ideas about that, so let's go. Um, and that was a classic example of trying to film on a c very cold and damp day. Uh, you probably just noticed that the camera lens just fogged up. So uh, for the last 15 minutes I've had uh, been holding the camera in front of a fan heater on low to uh, <laughs> just demist it. The thing is, the mist wasn't on the outside, it was on the inside of the lens. Don't know how it got there, but... Uh, and it has happened to me once before. So, um, these are just some of the problems that, you you know, can occur um, when you're a filmmaker. <laughs> and, you know, you're doing it all on your own. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to putting some of these screws in. Okay, um, I'll just give you a quick uh, fly around um, to recap what we've done today. And of course this beautiful, uh, what should be a uh, Australian Ute toolbox, very very well made. And of course that lovely 
Australia made sticker which is going to stay on there um, so that's what it looks like on there and that's big enough to house all of the electrics uh, because there's going to be lots of power supplies in there and what have you and of course the rail or tray whatever you want to call it for the y-axis cable cable chain that is that's sweet actually that's really really nice and of course the x-axis cable chain looking quite uh, quite impressive So that is the last of the, well, mechanical type build of this Maxi CNC router. Um, now the next videos are going to be broke up into two or three videos, which is solely going to be devoted to the electrical wiring and setup. Um, and we're going to be setting this up with Mark 3. Okay, first. Um, and the reason I'm breaking it up is because I have so many people asking so much, well, should we say so much detail about how to wire one of these up. Because there is, because there's four different electrical circuits on it. You know, there's, there's 240 volt, um, then there's three phase for this, uh, then you've got 5 volt, and then 40, 5 volt DC, then you've got 48 volt DC high power output. So you've got all these individual circuits, and you know, they all have to be done right. And especially the 240 and oh, sorry 230 and the three phase for, for this um, so I'm going to break it up into uh, a couple of sections so it's not complicated and you know the videos don't go on for like an hour and a half uh, because I don't think anybody's going to sit through that uh, and there's important information in it uh, that you you know you need to you need to know <laughs> okay so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please like subscribe and don't forget to press that little bell thing all right and you know you'll get a, a an indication then of when a, a new video comes up and uh, if you would like to support the channel there's information uh, underneath this video in the video description area uh, you could become a patron which would be very very helpful um, I can tell you <laughs> you know it's the patrons that really keep the channel going and uh, in return you know there's um, a discount codes down there for um, Fusion 360 if you have to buy it it's 20% off uh, there's a discount code for that. There's a discount code there for Cavco, 5% off right for any of their programs or any way you you choose to, um, whether you want to subscribe monthly, yearly, buy it outright, 5% off across the board. That includes if you're a business too, you still get 5% off. So, Thank you for tuning into this video and watching it and I hope you tune in and see some more and uh, I'll try to keep you entertained. So, it's bye for now.